So those are two of the new batteries that we're going to be installing on, on Z3, two lithionics batteries, two 12 volt lithionics batteries. Hi, I'm Stephen from Catamaran Guru, and this is Craig from Maz Ocean. Uh, we're on Zuri 3 here, um, and we're here today to talk about lithium ion battery installation. We decided to go lithium because we found that our existing battery bank of gels, which was 780 amp hours, was just not giving us enough capacity to get through a day. To give you an example, our gels were the 780 amp, uh, amp hours, but roughly 50% is usable. So let's call it 400 amp hours is usable. This boat draws 35 amps an hour. So in 12 hours, we pretty much de depleted our battery capacity and we're below 12 volts. What we've done is we are going to install 1,200 amp hours of lithium ion batteries, which can discharge all the way down to 10%, but probably better down to 20 which is going to give us a thousand usable amp hours versus 300, call it 400. So we've more than doubled the size of our battery bank by going lithium. This is an initial installation. We did it. We didn't want to get fancy with air conditioners running or anything like that. This is batteries out, batteries in, and dramatically incre increasing our battery capacity. We're going to discuss with Craig here what the options are to upgrade it, but this is your basic installation changing out gel batteries for lithium ion batteries, half the weight, more than double the capacity. These particular batteries are uh, lithionics batteries uh, with an internal BMS um, as, a, as opposed to an external BMS. Each battery has a capacity of 315 amp hours. Um, and as Stephen mentioned, you know, the, the 315 amp hours up, up to 90% of that battery's capacity is usable. And in fact, at approximately 90%, the battery will, the BMS will shut off, will shut off the battery, but you can access that 10% by resetting the battery. Um, you would need to get to, into the battery compartment, right. push the reset button, right. and you could access that reserve capacity. But right. at that point, it would become important to start charging your batteries. Right. <laughs> the BMS is a battery management system. And these particular batteries have an internal BMS. Um, some lithium ion batteries have an external BMS. Now, the, the, the purpose of the BMS is to protect the batteries uh, from overcharging and uh, undercharging, uh, d discharging. Um, because lithium ion batteries uh, are, are very sensitive to, to overcharging and, and discharging. And because they obviously expensive, you want to protect your assets. The, the biggest reason to get an external BMS would, would be if you wanted a greater um, discharge from the batteries, a greater momentary discharge from the batteries. Right now, the batteries that we're installing with the internal BMS can have a max discharge rate of 250 amps. If we had to use a lithionics battery, an equivalent size battery, a 300 amp hour battery that had an external BMS, the maximum discharge rate is in the 400 amp range. Okay. So if you were running air conditioning or, or dive compressors or, or some very high load items that required a large amount of amps um, at, at one time, right. you would go with a, an external BMS. Okay, and this time we decided to go with lithionics. Why did we go with lithionics? We, we chose lithionics batteries um, because they're, they're a very good quality battery. They're made in the United States and they are the first lithium ion battery that has achieved the UL listing. These are Victron Energy gel batteries. If you take a look at the size of this battery, this battery has a, a capacity of 130 amp hours. Whereas the lithionics battery over here, the lithium ion battery, has a capacity, it's slightly bigger, but it has almost, well, not quite three times, but it has 315 amps of capacity. So there's more capacity for smaller space. And what about temperature in the engine room? Uh, we, you know, obviously we put places in the engine room. Is that, you know, not in, in, I know the old lithiums were sensitive to, to temperature. How, how, do, how do these handle it? Charging temperature range is 32 degrees to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And discharging temperature range is minus four degrees to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Okay, what temperature does an engine room get to? Probably around 120. 110, 120. We've got um, blowers in the engine room, so they're constantly blowing the hot air out. So yeah. it does keep the temperature down in the engine room. The, these batteries have uh, a built-in Bluetooth um, module. Once you open the app and the batteries are turned on, so each battery has to be turned on. Now you see there's a, a button over here to turn it on. So you press and hold the button for about a second and the lighter, the ring around the battery switch will go blue, which means now that you have essentially turned the battery on. You've uh, closed the, the BMS inside so that the battery will function. And I, I hit discover, it should see all four of the batteries. Um, so now what I can do is I can go into each battery and I can see this, this particular battery over here, which based on the serial number, you can identify exactly which battery you're looking at. And I can see that the current voltage of that battery is 13.44 volts. Um, it is at a 99% state of charge. Uh, it has a current draw of zero amps. Um, so there's a lot of information on the app. It also has uh, another, if you go to the settings wheel in the top corner over there, you go to the status code reader. So if there's something happening with the battery, you can go to the status code reader and, uh, and it'll tell you what, what what is happening if the, if the temperature gets too high will the bms switch the battery off it will okay yes so if we, the temperature gets too high the bms is going to protect the battery and turn it off okay so we've got built-in safety at every step every step of the way yeah what what else is there about them craig i mean they, they're lighter so for the equivalent number of amp hours they are significantly lighter take up significantly less space than what a lead acid chemistry style battery would take up. Right. Um, the batteries have a greater depth of discharge. Um, they have a much greater life expectancy. Right, which uh, brings me to the next point. The price of these batteries is was eye-watering. Uh, you know, the price the price per, per 100 amps is about a thousand, a thousand plus dollars per thousand amps, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. but, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that while your upfront cost is prohibitive for a lot of people, the long, the life of the battery and the long-term situation, me actually, it works out cheaper to have the lithium ions in because you probably go through four sets of batteries in the lifespan of a set of lithium ions. So if you start costing it out and looking at the, the you know, the, the, the charge capacity and the, and then the ease of living on your boat. I mean, we, we did this on our lagoon, Craig did that installation for us and the lithium, the lithiums changed our life. We didn't have to charge the run the generator twice a day. Um, you know, they took charge much easier. The solar panels, you know, they suck the power in. It's not like regular batteries where for the first 20, 30 minutes, you're kind of reversing the flow. Um, so the lithium ions changed our life on the last boat and obviously we, you know, we didn't want to do it when the boat was brand new because we paid for those, those, those uh, gel batteries. But on our last trip, we found that every day we were running our generator for two to three hours, twice a day. So we're running our generator for like six hours a day to keep up with the demand of the boat. Um, you know, we don't want to start skimping or camping on the boat. So, you know, we want to be able to switch something on. We have appliances that have quite high drawers. We have a fridge that uh, is a full stand up, a full, full size fridge. Um, and we don't want to co co compromise on our lifestyle. So the solution was to up, to increase the battery bank is, is, is was the, we thought the solution. Um, hopefully it's going to work. Craig's been doing a great job with it. And uh, you know, he's, he's done a lot of these. Um, he's sort of my go-to guy when it comes to working on our boat on the electronics and battery side. Now, tell me about the alternators, Craig. External, internal regulators, etc. So, using the alternators as they currently are, um, and, and currently the alternators are internally regulated, it is not necessarily a problem as long as they charge within the charging parameters of the batteries. Right. Um, now, what's going to happen if you use the alternators that are internally regulated is they're going to charge according to their internal charge profile. Right. If the batteries do not like, the voltage gets too high, the, the batteries are, are getting overcharged, the batteries are going to disconnect. Right, so it's your safety feature. Again. It's That's a safety, safety feature. Right. The potential exists if that happens, 
that your alternator will become damaged. Um, so we probably should, the next step is put external regulators and program them for lithium ions. Correct. And, and what we're really doing by doing that, we're going to take your alternators off, we're going to modify them to be externally regulated, we're going to put them back in the boat, install a wake speed external regulator, um, and, and what that is going to do is it's going to use the same alternators, it's just going to make them more efficient, right. more, you're just going to be, yeah, they're going to work right. efficiently, more efficiently. Well, there you have it. You know, we, uh, from our basic uh, installation, uh, which is probably going to be most yachties, they're going to try and keep it basic. Maybe a lot of guys sort of try and get air, at least one air conditioner running. Uh, we haven't done that yet. We'll probably get to it at some stage, but uh, we're budget conscious. To the mega hundred grand installations, you know, Craig handles them, but uh, you know, we've come down with uh, these lithionics now, and uh, you know, we're pretty satisfied, but uh, we'll keep you posted on our next cruise, how we're enjoying them and uh, what sort of freedom these batteries are giving us.